Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. If you're looking for a job, you've come to the right place. Today we'll talk to Martin Yate, author of The Ultimate Job Search Guide. Martin, thanks for being with us. Bill, it's good to speak to you again. It's been a while. It, it has, and you've been on our show before, and I know your book is updated literally every year, and I'm looking at it here, and I'm saying, my gosh, I'm glad I'm not applying for a job because I really have to start cover to cover in order to learn the skills necessary. Why aren't these skills taught in schools? I mean, this is a, almost a 400-page book, maybe a few more, 390-something. Uh, um, th- there's so much to know about this. Do people just absorb it or get it somehow? The, uh, well, it would be nice if they did. The fact is that the system is broken. I mean, everyone went to s- send their kids to school so that they could make a better living. And everyone goes to college to help them get a job. But the people who run the colleges live in an ivory tower, and they believe in learning for learning's sake and a sherry before lunch. And they have no idea what the real world is like. So at the average state college, there is one career services person for every 3,000 students. And at Ivy League schools, much better. There's one career counselor for every eight or 900. In other words, no one gets any coaching. And when they do, it's idiotic stuff like follow your bliss and never work another day in the rest of your life. Well, if you realize that's rubbish, then you, we get the other one, which is get a job, start at the bottom, work hard, be loyal, make sacrifices, and your job will be secure until we can replace you with someone cheaper. Um, I read that somewhere. section in your book, yes, and that's very good, and we're, we're going to uh, tell our audience to flag that those pages when they get to them. And one thing, though, very honestly, you point out, you say a lot of it is really common sense, but we didn't see it, no one highlighted it before, and... I guess it's like eating healthy. I mean, if, if you ask somebody you want to eat healthy or unhealthy, we'd all pick healthy until we tasted the healthy food, and then we kind of, you know, and sometimes we just don't know what food is better for us. You know, I just, uh, an hour before we spoke, I finished a, uh, a coaching session with a, bio-sci- a senior biosciences research engineer, and we do resumes and coaching for all kinds of people. And I understood about one word in 10 that he said, but that was the important thing because I can translate what he does into common English. And he said at the end of it, you know, all this is such common sense. I mean, I do this in my job. I just hadn't thought of it in this context of managing my life. And that's what you do for us. And again, a lot of the the best uh, inventions and things in the world are really simple when we look at them, but someone has to guide us. Now, you say in your book, to think of ourselves as me incorporated and work from that and develop research and development, strategic planning, public relations, sales. What is that about? Can you, can you get into that a little bit? This is successful careers don't happen by accident. For 80% of the people, they get to 40 and they've had one very similar job after another and they go, what happened to my career? This isn't a career. This is just a bunch of jobs. And the the problem is, is that our system is broken. There is no connection between what is taught in the schools or the colleges and the world of work. Um, People don't have the right information to begin with. So it gets very confusing when it's time to change a job. And the only advice you've got is from the last century and clearly doesn't apply anymore. (laughs) And that's definitely the truth. I mean, certainly with me. And I guess we have to look at this as it is a business that we're doing, a mini business in and of ourselves to get to get someone to hire us. If we think of ourselves as a company, a company is there to make money. And it's there to, to increase money over time. And it has to, you know the company you work for? You may not like them, but the paychecks are good every Friday. They're not doing everything any, everything wrong. So what I say is, look, look at how a company is structured. They have a, a, an R&D department to see what the uh, marketplace is going to need in the next few years. Um, they have a strategic planning department to work out how they're going to develop that product or service. They have a finance department to decide how they're going to afford it and how much they can pay. And I'm saying treat yourself as a financial entity and stop 
having a career be something that happens to you and make it something that you make happen and have some measure of control of. Now, Martin, uh, before we went on the air, I was kidding you because you have a section that almost looks like lotto numbers. You say, you call them economic realities, but the magic numbers seem to be 50, 4, 3, 7, and 10. Can you tell us what those numbers really are about? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if I get them in the right order. Uh, we all, on average, work for a, uh, about a half a century. Start in our late teens, theoretically retire at 65, but we're living longer and we're not. Um, according to Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, we change jobs about once every four years. Uh, you divide that into 50, and you get somewhere between 12 and 15 job changes. Of those job changes, three of them are not going to be simply stopping being an accountant in one company and becoming an accountant in another company. It's going to be stopping being an accountant and becoming a massage therapist. That's a career change. That's different. Uh, the seven to ten, every seven to ten years, check this out on Wikipedia, uh, recessions, they come around with regularity every seven to ten years, and they have done since the Second World War. So I'm saying your life is happening in this context. And if you look at all the skills that are necessary to succeed and survive and prosper and feel good about life, the most important skills are also your weakest, and they are your ability to understand how to manage a career, your ability to get job interviews, and then your weakest skill of all and the single most important one, your ability to turn those job interviews into job offers because that's what puts food on your table and shoes on your feet. And, you know, just knowing those economic realities, as you said, 50-year work life, I guess most of us would, would come up with a number like that. But we don't think that when we get a job, somehow you, you don't think, well, I'm going to change every four years. You might think, okay, this is a good starting job, or it, it's a nice place to begin, but that company may not be there in four years. They may be moving to Texas, Brazil, or another, you know, Canada, or something like that. Um, they may diversify into something totally different. So th- that's another reality, and as you pointed out, and nothing to be ashamed of, we're going to change careers, because that career we started out with may not be there in five years, ten years. No, and- might not indeed. <laughs> And, you know, it becomes a reality. Martin, I would like to let our audience know that if they just tuned in, our guest today is Martin Yate, Y-A-T-E. That's going to be a very important name to you because he's written The Ultimate Job Search Guide. Um, He goes over this every year and updates the book and really makes it something for today. This is not a book that was good 20 years ago. This is the present version of the book. And if you're looking for a job, he's going to tell you the new rules of the game. It's uh, uh, The Ultimate Job Search Guide by our guest, Martin Yate. Martin, where can we get the book? And is there a website you want to tell us about? Um, you can get the book anywhere online, um, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, any local bookstores, except the ones that sell channeling crystals on the North Shore. <laughs> um, I'm not very big there. <laughs> um, but you can get the book anywhere. And is there a website that we should know uh, about? Yeah, um, uh, the website, guess what? The book's called Ultimate Job Search Guide, a knock em dead book. It's knockemdead.com. As in, go and knock em dead, kid. And that's the word knock, and then E-M, and the word D-E-A-D, right? That's it. Okay. Um, really, for anybody, instead of wasting your time, because if you lose a month in the job search, that's several thousand dollars you could be making. And even if you have a present job, to read this book and start thinking for the future, and we found that the most successful people on the show... Uh, they're not waiting for the things to happen to them. They initiate and take the lead. Now, Martin, one of the things that's totally new to me and uh, helpful uh, if you tell us more about it, the key today seems to be, literally, key words. And you say this is a secret language, and it, the people who know the language are going to get the jobs. So can you take us behind the curtain and explain that to us? Well, there's a, there's a couple of three contexts that can be used in. Let's address keywords in resumes first. Um, if, if you read the Ultimate Job Search Guide, you will learn every way known to man and the devil of how to avoid resume databases. But the fact is, your resume is still going to, in, going to go into resume databases. Some of them now have half a billion resumes. Only the top 20 or 30 get, ever get looked at by a recruiter who's doing a search. So you've got to pull up really high to be seen. Now, this means instead of your resume being a simple recitation of all that you think is important, because that's subjective and irrelevant, 
It's based on looking at a handful of job descriptions for the job you want to get and seeing what all the employers hold in common and how they describe their needs. And then your resume, if it echoes what you bring to the table in those areas, it's not subjectively based anymore. It's based on what the customer wants to buy. So the old way we used to think of it, someone picks up our resume and sees that we were captain of the badminton team, we were on the track team, and uh, we were given an award by speech and debate was, you know, great, and it was somewhat impressive, and maybe they'd have us in. Today, that can be completely meaningless if we don't use those buzzwords that the computer's going to recognize. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, and, and, and it's not just a matter of stuffing it with buzzwords. It's using the words, phrases, and acronyms that employers are using using to describe their needs by echoing their language, right? I might have a title of sales manager at my current job. My resume wouldn't have sales manager as the target job. It would have sales management because that gets more hits than the sales manager. Uh, but I might see a job posting that I could do where the, the exact same job was called director of sales. So I would customize the resume by changing the target job title and changing any of the other language to match their words, phrases, and acronyms of the hard and soft skills that they are looking for in that person. And from what I gather, and and, um, going through your book, a resume that uh, would effectively be the way we, most of us were taught to write it, you know, tell you all the good things you did, worked at this company, was promoted to this, and even if we went up the line and had a nice degree of promotions, and that's probably going to sit unread because it doesn't have these keywords in the right places, and it's just not even going to be looked at, much less considered. You know, I had a very interesting conversation yesterday um, with a guy, 30 years experience, senior guy, and he says, and this is an example of almost everyone in the country, he says, I've got 30 years of experience and I'm having trouble getting it on one page, so I think I need a resume writer. Now, this is really an idiot. He's got 30 years experience, uh, uh, not a job hopper, clearly knows nothing about career management, job search or interest, absolutely knows nothing about resumes. That rule of a one-page resume, that goes back to 1973. And you still hear it. We're talking about the schools being out of date. The schools are still saying one- and two-page resumes. Well, you know what? Jobs have got a lot more complex with technology. They take more explaining. The more experience you get, the more explaining it takes. Uh, So um, we need to customize our resume in a way that's going to work effectively for us. The amazing thing, he probably has, you know, a great background in his field and is probably, I'm going to say just the way you described him in the top 10% of what he does at his point in career. But yet, in terms of uh, setting up a resume, presenting the resume, um, he's like me when it comes to do it yourself. If I put a nail in the wall, the whole world wall cracks around it and more or less tells me, get away and get someone like Martin Yates to help you. Let's see what he did. He went to the doctor and said, this is what's wrong. This is how I want you to fix it. (laughs) Right, right. And he said, one page resume. Now, 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 let me ask you, Bill. This is a very complex mathematical question. But if the discoverability of a resume depends on its data density, meaning its density of the right words used in the right way, What's going to be more effective, a one-page resume or a two-page resume? Oh, de- definitely. We want to go longer then. Yeah, because it doubles the amount of selling space. Now, the other rule is never longer than two pages. The resume writers support this because they don't want to write more than two pages. <laughs> right? But, but imagine... And and I'm the author of Hiring the Best, which is in print all over the world. It's a, a, a management book and has been in print for 30 years. Um, <clears throat> Imagine you and I looking at resumes, and we, we have this one, and we say, wow, this woman looks great. She sounds wonderful. Let's look at page two. And, and I get to the bottom of page two first and say, hey, Bill, we should really have her in. And you say, yeah, oh, no, wait a minute, Martin. She's got a three-page resume. We couldn't possibly interview her. <laughs> 
It's never happened. It's never happened in the history of the world. But I, I think I would be much like your friend and make those mistakes, but that's why we want to talk to you some more and find, about, find out about the ultimate job search guide. Martin, at this point in the show, we have to... 